Hey guys, it's Come for MC here again. Welcome to our 20th LBP tutorial. For our 20th one, which I thought was a pretty cool milestone, I thought I'd cover something a little more complex. What I'm going to do today is talk about um, feedback loops, a little bit of refresher on analog signals, and I'm probably going to have to break this into two parts, so hopefully you've got some time to kill. So real quick, I just want to review a little bit about what some of the logic things do with analog signals. And anytime I say analog signals, I just mean we're talking about signals that are not full 100%. So I could say have 70% and say 30%. And if I were to run those two signals through an AND gate, what's going to happen with that AND gate is it's going to take the minimum of the two. So remember we had 70 and 30. So it's going to output 30 because that's the minimum of the two. And I'm just using a logic probe over here that was made by Fort. P-S-N-P-H-O-R-T. And I find these quite handy. And you'll see that it does output the minimum of those two at 30. If I were to use an OR gate, it's going to output the maximum. Okay. And as you could probably expect, if you were to use a NOT gate, I'm just going to wire that through here, what it does is it does 100 minus the signal. So what it's going to do right here is it's going to invert or take 100 minus 70 and that's going to make it a 30. And you could do that with any signal and that's just what a NOT gate does. Um, but the big thing that we're going to talk about today is feedback loops. And that's any time and I'll show you real quick, that's any time we have a logic system, it could be one component, it could be several components strung, strung together, it's going to be any time we have a signal looping back into the system again. And that's where we get the feedback term. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a grab switch on here just to show you real quick what this is going to do. I have this just on a piece of dissolve here. So when I put the grab switch, I can grab this left side. What this is going to do with the OR gate, remember the OR takes the highest signal. When I grab here, it's going to give us 100% signal. So that's not really analog, it's more digital. 100% signal is going to go through the OR gate. It only needs one of them. That's going to end up loop, looping back through. And what's going to happen is that 100% signal is going to get stuck looping through this OR gate. And what that does is it actually serves as a permanent gate. So as soon as I grab, it goes to 100%. When I let go, that 100% is trapped looping through there. We can do the exact same thing if, we, if something with uh, analog signals and OR gates. So let's say I had a signal of, well, let's go 40. It's gonna, that 40 is going to run right through the OR gate. If I create a feedback loop, loop it through, now even if this 40 goes away, that 40 is still trapped in there looping through. The only way that's going to change is if one of the signals coming through exceeds that 40 and it resets the new loop value. So I could bump this to say 60 and now 60 is going to be looping through there. If I bump this back down to 50 though, the 50 is less than the 60, the 60 is higher so that 60 is going to continue looping through there. We can do the exact same thing with, interestingly enough, nodes. So let's just get rid of this OR gate. If I created a node and I wired that right into this 50% or this 50 battery, it's going to display that 50. If I take the node and I loop it back to itself, now there's no battery involved and it does store that 50% signal. So that's kind of nice. Uh, you may be asking yourself, well, why in the world would we want to do that when we could just use a 50% battery? Well, one of the things we can do with a node like this, and I'm going to have to use another node to make that timer so it doesn't move. I can use a timer, say, bump it way up to 100 seconds for the, the uh, target time and then drop the current time down to 1 and this is going to allow me to store values that are not quite or that are smaller than 1% in here and notice we can't see that 1% because there are 
logic probe doesn't go that far, I can just use this other one and we can see that it's a little less than 1%. Uh, there's a little bit of error in timers, so this should come out to 1%, uh, but you could play with it to get it the values you want. So if I drop it down to say 0 0.6, that's accurate. 0 0.5, it's close, but not quite. There is a little bit of error in timers. But once we get this signal what we want it to be, so I think I figured this out earlier. If I drop it down to 94 seconds, there I get the 0.005 or half of 1%. And then I can get I can trap that in the node there. And now I have a stored signal of something I can't get with a battery. And that's a direct application of how we can use these feedback loops to get analog signals that we can't get uh, with a battery. And the nice thing about this is I could capture this. And now I have a captured half of 1% battery. And if I use that, you'll see that it does retain that signal. So that's really nice. Um, other applications of these feedback loops. Um, I use this one a lot, a selector. A two-port selector where I wire back to itself. You'll see why I want to do that in a second. Um, if I pull out a player sensor and I just wire this right up to our probes here, you can see that when I move around, it spits out an analog signal. And that's fine. You just have to recognize that it does that. So when you get sufficiently close, it will go to 100%. I have that dissolve in the way so I can't reach it. And you'll notice that somewhere in between, we've got a 0.4195 signal. Now, if I wanted to do something with this signal, use it in a logic network that I didn't want that to be an analog signal, I wanted it to be digital, I can do that really quickly by just running it through a selector with this little feedback loop on the top of it. What it's going to do is it's going to make that 100% anytime I'm inside this player sensor radius. Anytime I'm in there, it's going to be 100%. If I jump out, it drops to zero. If I jump back in, it goes to 100%. And so that's a really quick way to convert analog signals, these percentage signals, to a digital signal. Okay, now I want to show you guys what we can do with these OR gates. Some, or, yeah, I won't use an OR gate. I'll use a direction combiner. And I'm going to create a feedback loop with this and do some interesting things with it. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is set my directional combiner to be at 100%. And I just do that by wiring a battery into the positive node. If you can't remember, we have talked about this in previous videos. You can go back and look at my addition and subtraction video. A directional combiner, if it's got two signals coming in, it takes the top signal and it subtracts the bottom signal. What I have right now is just a directional combiner with no bottom signal. So that signal is that 100% battery signal is just passing through. And if I, just like with my node, wire that feedback loop through to the positive, it's storing this 100% signal. Now, you might be able to think about what's going to happen if I take a smaller signal, say a 2% signal or something around that. I'll try 3%. If I take a 3% signal, as soon as I plug that into the negative node there, when this loop comes through, it's going to have that 100% stored, and then it's going to subtract that 3%. And so the next time a signal goes through that this loop, it's going to have 97%. And then it's going to subtract 3 more. And then it's going to be down to 94 and it's going to do that until it gets all the way down to zero. And we can watch on our logic probes what happens when I actually drop that. You'll see that it counts down by three until it gets to zero. And it does this weird flickering effect. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but what it does is it subtracts all the way down to zero. And it does so in increments of 3%. So let's just reset this back to 100%. And let's say we wanted to make it so it only subtracts 3% every time I grab this grabby pad here. Well, we can definitely do that. We can use some of the things we've just talked about with AND gates. 
and we can create a pulse so it only pulses that signal through. So first I'll pull out a grab switch, I'll just put it down here, and I want this grab switch to create a pulse, which means it's going to be on for just one simulation frame, and then it'll go back off until it, someone releases and grabs it again. And I just do that by using a one count counter and wiring to its reset. So you can look at what's going on with that counter when I grab. It pulses once and then resets. Okay. Now I'm going to use a bat this 3% battery. And I'm going to combine that with the pulse via an AND gate. Now remember the AND gate takes the minimum of the two signals coming in. Right now this has got a 0% signal and so there's going to be no signal being subtracted. As soon as I grab it and it pulses this counter to 100% because there's only one count, you grab once, it's all the way full, that's going to be at 100% and then it's going to take the minimum of 3% and 100% which in this case is going to be the 3% and that's going to subtract in our feedback loop. So now every time I grab it's going to subtract 3% and it's going to do that until it gets down to zero but we have a little bit of odd behavior that's going to happen when we do get to zero so let's just run this down blah 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 when I get down to one if I press it one more time it should go down to one minus three which would be a negative two what happens is this negative two loops back through our system though and goes into the positive these uh, nodes on the left hand side of the directional combiner they don't differentiate between positive or negative signals so it'll just take that negative 2 and read that as a positive 2 and so that's why when I grab this it will show 2 so it will subtract 3 but it will interpret that as positive 2 we can fix that by using a directional splitter in our loop so I'm just going to pull out a directional splitter, wire this directional combiner into the splitter, and instead of use, running the loop right through the directional combiner, I'll make the loop after the direction splitter. So my motivations for that were when you have a negative signal coming through here, when, it, when a negative signal reaches the directional splitter, the negative will branch off to the bottom, and you'll notice that it doesn't wire to anything. So when the signal coming in is negative, there's going to be zero coming out through the positive, and so a zero signal is going to loop back through. And so that's going to, and let me just increase the size of this battery here to 11%, say. So that's going to count down by 11. So now when I subtract again, that negative signal is essentially going to be discarded through this bottom direction splitter because there's nothing wired to it. So when I press it one more time, it's going to go to zero. So you can see that we can create sort of some interesting things with this. I hope you see some applications for health bars in that you can change what the, the, the damage is done each time. You can change any of this to say 3%, 11%, whatever you want to do. And you could even use that trick we did with notes to create signals that are not whole percentages. So you could do like 4.5%, stuff like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to continue and pick this up where I left off and talk about how we can make this count in both positive and negative and also be able to do different signals, uh, subtracting and so on and so forth. So I'll see you guys in a minute. And hopefully stick around for the next one. Thanks, guys. The tutorials will unleash not only exciting tools and objects, but knowledge and the deepest secrets of the cosmos.